In this brief lecture, we'll talk about how to develop the research methods section of your paper. We'll dissect the pieces of this section and talk about what types of content you should include within the section of your paper. So what exactly is a method section? The research methods section of your paper describes all of the technical steps that you take to carry out your research project. A research method section outlines the different procedures that for systematically selecting, gathering, and processing the data for your project. One of the things that you do in a method section is discuss the reasoning about why particular methods were used for your research project. After reading the method section of your paper, somebody should understand why you selected a particular method and how it's relevant to your research problem. How will it help you to shed light on the research questions that you posed? There are two large umbrellas of research methods in sociology. There are quantitative research methods in which information is collected from people that can be coded numerically and then analyzed with statistics. Common forms of quantitative data collection include survey questionnaires or surveys collected by other researchers or even organizations and government agencies collect information from people that can be coded numerically and analyzed using statistics. Now qualitative methods is a, is a different form of data collection that involves collecting information in the form of text or audio or observations through in-depth interviews, focus groups, participant observations, or textual sources like newspapers, and even social media like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram can be used. Qualitative methods can be used to analyze these sources of data. Now, what is the purpose of a research method section? One of the things that you should do in a research method section is introduce the methodological approach for investigating your research question. You should provide a rationale for why a particular method is the right fit for your project. You should describe the population that you're studying and justify why you selected that population for your project. You should also talk about if you're collecting a sample of people from a population, how are the procedures, what are the procedures through which you'll collect, you'll select particular people for your project to study. So how are you going to get to those people that will take part in your research? What are the different steps you will take to identify and recruit them for your research project? One of the things that researchers will also do is identify and describe potential limitations to this methodological approach. And within the research method section, you'll also explain how you analyze the data that you'll collect for your project. What steps will you take to analyze the data that you collect from people? Broadly, the method section can be divided into two components or subheadings within the larger method section. The two sections that should be part of your research methods include data collection, where are you getting the data from, and then data analysis. How are you making sense of the data that you collect? So within the data collection subheading, you should describe how your data will be collected. Are you conducting surveys? Are you doing interviews? Are you gathering information from social media? Where is your data coming from? And secondly, how do you intend to select people from the larger population that you're studying? How are you sampling people from that population? Under the data analysis subheading, you wanna describe your method of analyzing the data that you collect. Now this could include statistical analysis procedures for quantitative data, if you're analyzing numerical responses to surveys, or it could include content or thematic analysis methods when you're analyzing qualitative data collected from interviews or social media sources. Now, while the data collection and data analysis subheadings represent the two components of the method section, and that's the main body of the text, there is 
additional appendix materials that you might want to attach as resources for somebody to review so that they understand your research methods. Now, relevant appendix materials for methods section might be a list of semi-structured interview questions if you're conducting qualitative interviews. What are some of the questions that you're gonna ask people? If you're conducting surveys, you may want to actually include a draft of the survey questionnaire that you're planning to administer to the study population. So I'd like to offer you a few writing guidelines for the method section. The recommended length for a method section might be around 700 words, and this is roughly two to three double-spaced pages. Now, you should have an overview paragraph that introduces the selected method and provides a rationale for why you selected that research method for your project. We should include subheadings for data collection and data analysis. So again, what are all the steps that you're taking to collect your data? That goes under data collection. And then what are all the steps that you're taking to analyze that data? That should all be listed under the data analysis procedures. And also you wanna include any relevant supporting materials, a draft of your interview questions or the survey questions that you plan to ask. These are excellent examples of information that could be provided in a, an appendix. How do you get started writing about data collection? The data collection plan is so important to your project because it's almost like a blueprint. It provides the plan for how you're going to access and gather information from people. It should be really clearly stated about what the different steps you'll take to collect information from people. You want to begin the first paragraph of your method section by describing the method that you chose and why it's a good fit for your project. You might want to review a few scholarly articles that describe this method of data collection. Next, you want to create a subheading for data collection. And under this subheading, you want to list all of the different procedures for selecting people and cases, for contacting them, for gathering information from them. Now, if you're collecting data yourself, and this is referred to as primary data collection through surveys or interviews, describe the sampling method by which you'll identify and recruit people for your project. Start developing possible interview or survey questions and store them in a separate document that you'll include in the appendix. Now, if you're using data collect through by someone else, this is referred to as secondary data, provide a detailed description of where the data was obtained from the unit of analysis. What is it you're analyzing? Is it a person? Is it a state? Is it a country? The number of observations that you plan to collect and the variables that you plan to include and how they're measured. Now, because there's different forms of data, depending on the type of data that you're collecting for your project, there's certain information that's important to include for each type of data. So if you're conducting qualitative interviews, you may want to detail the sampling procedures, how you're going about selecting people to interview. What are the steps that you're taking to actually interview people? Where will you conduct the interviews? How will you be conducting them? Will you do them in person, over the phone? You might want to detail your, your steps for recording and professionally transcribing the interviews. So that means taking the audio recording of the interview and then writing out the text of the conversation that you had with somebody. For surveys and survey questionnaires, you want to detail the sampling procedures. How are you selecting people from a larger population? Survey administration. How are you going to actually conduct the surveys and collect them from people? Are you going to interview people face to face or are you going to send people a link to a survey electronically through an email and they click on the link and complete it over a computer or a phone? What are the survey measures? Are you going to use some existing survey instruments or are you actually designing some of the questions yourself? You want to describe the measures that are part of your survey. If you're analyzing social media from sources like Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, you might want to describe the characteristics of that media. 
Are they posts or are they comments? What is the time period for data collection? How many data elements are you analyzing? And lastly, many people use archival records or available data sources from government agencies or even survey data sets collected by other researchers. You want to describe what the unit of analysis is. Is it people? Is it states? Are they cities that you're analyzing? 